Paul Mason there. Well, joining me from New York is the journalist and activist Laurie Penny. She was out on the streets today with the Occupy protesters. And joining me here in the studio, Richard Sharp, a former partner at Goldman Sachs, one of four city figures recruited last summer by George Osborne to consult on options uh, for reducing the public deficit. And uh, welcome to both of you. Richard Sharp, you visited both these movements. Mm. Uh, you must be pretty impressed with how they've managed to influence mainstream politics now, aren't you? Well, I was actually disappointed with the demonstrations themselves in some way because the, there's a, there is a generation um, which does have to care deeply about their future, which has been damaged um, by the activities of the last 15 years of governments and commerce and left a legacy of debt and problems that they're experiencing in seeking employment and facing a future where they will have to repay the debts associated with expenditure for which they got no benefit. So what are you saying? They're doing the right thing by protesting, surely? Well, I, I, I thought the, the demonstrations, certainly in New York, um, was, was, for my mind, uh, at that time, this was only ten days ago, was chaotic and flaccid. It was a tourist spectacle with more journalists than protesters, and, and some of the points being made uh, were trivial. And I think uh, there are some substantive points, but they were not being made when I was there. Laurie Penny, what do you make of that? A demonstration that managed to be simultaneously chaotic and flaccid? Well, that may have been the scene a few days ago, but um, certainly after the eviction of Occupy Wall Street on Tuesday night, uh, the energy has been galvanised again, and uh, there were thousands of people on the street today. Um, very, very, a lot of angry chanting, banks got bailed out, we got sold out. I saw people on the streets being violently arrested, a lot of anger. Um, there was certainly energy, and there was certainly not only... Um, broad um, and sweeping ideas for social change, not, uni you know, not unified ideas, certainly. But there was also a wonderful moment, um, which I hope someone's captured on camera, where people sat down in the middle of one of the occupied streets and started sharing stories. You know, it's one, one, one woman saying her home had been repossessed, another public school teacher saying, all my students' parents are unemployed, students, families, workers, um, everyone coming together to share their stories. And Why? this is really what the day has been about, partly, and that's... An and I want to kind of make it clear that it wasn't just scenes of violence and um, of police brutality on the streets. Uh, there was also a lot of hope and a lot of joyful defiance. Well, what, um, which what, I think what do you make of the, of the fact one then? Of the very important. Sure. What do you make of the fact then that, that despite this joyful defiance, as you describe it, uh, broadly there is less public sympathy for you as the protests go on. People are, are losing faith in what you're doing and just finding the demonstrations annoying there. Well, 35% um, of the American public uh, still support the Occupy Wall Street movement and the Occupy movement. Um, I find it um, rather disheartening that after about a year of uh, interviewing protesters, activists and journalists, Emily, you still seem not quite to get that this is broader than a public annoyance. This is about a generation and uh, more than just a generation um, turning around and, and trying to refigure politics after having been told for their whole lives that there's nothing they can do to confront capitalism. And I mean, it's very interesting, isn't it, Richard Sharp? Broadly, they have managed to bring wealth inequality to the top of the agenda. They've properly spooked President Obama. They've made David Cameron take a very strong stance on uh, bankers' bonuses here. Angela Merkel's talking about the Tobin tax. It doesn't sound that chaotic when you look at how the politicians around the world are responding. Well, look, we're facing a, a global economic crisis that some leading uh, central bankers have called unprecedented. Um, what is remarkable is that you have these tiny pockets of people where it hasn't gathered more momentum, given some of the, the real deprivation associated with unemployment as a result of the economic well, crisis. What do you think they should be doing then? Well, I mean, I what would you I, want I, to see I, them doing? I think, I think the, the issue is uh, uh, they have multiple problems. First of all... The leadership is distributed and not apparent at all. They've damaged their cause by making the cleaning up of the park and the behaviour that's taken place a bigger story than their objectives. The, um, what they've talked about is what they're against and not what they're for. OK, let's put that one to Laurie Penny then. What would you actually like to see change? In terms of concrete policies, what are you for? 
Um, I can't speak for the Occupy movement as a whole. Um, I'm just an individual um, reporting and associated with the Occupy movement. As, um, but I think what a lot of the Occupy occupiers know what they're know what they're for is change, is a different system. And obviously that sounds very very broad. But if you think um, in Wall Street, for example, uh, many of the people down on the streets are people who spent um, quite a lot of their young lives voting and working for the Obama campaign. And these are people who were promised change. Change, um, from at the hands of uh, left-wing politicians or central centre-left politicians, and now they're seeing that change is something you have to stand up and take for yourselves because politicians at the moment they don't see that they're going to but deliver it. what does that mean, Laurie? Um, what does that mean? Does that mean they, they want a change to the change Obama promise, or they're anti-Obama, or they're anti-capitalism, or what? You know, what does it mean in 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 sort of defining tangible terms? Well. Um, there are some people down there, for example, who want to see a return of the Glass-Steagall Act. There are some people who want to um, Im to impose um, a very limited tax on the wealthy. You know, some of the, some people are asking for revolutionary change. Some people are asking for just a little bit of leeway, a little bit of leeway, so people can live their lives with dignity and don't have to be, you know, forced into paying more and more towards the financial I, recklessness yeah, of the see, super rich. God, I, don't think, actually, no, I, don't, I don't think that's look, very. I don't the, think that's the, a very very big thing to ask. Richard Sharp. One of the reasons you're not hearing Excuse an answer me. is because this is in some sense, in a positive way, a, um, a, a, an argument of the left. And the real problem they have is the target should be socialism. In other words, it should be governments that spent money they didn't have that, oh, that, um, that, that disguised, that absolute disguised. Go on. Come, no, excuse, no, excuse Look, me. Excuse Laurie Penny, go on. Nonsense. We we have we have a massive deficits across the world because the, because of a financial crisis that occurred three years ago and was building up for Look, many many Laurie, years before Laurie, that. It was Laurie, it was not overspending. The, the we don't have debt because of the public sector. We don't have debt because <laughs> that we spent too much on public services. We have debt because the super rich and the banks were allowed to run well, rampant. Yeah, Richard Sharp. Is public is it, money that didn't really look, it's a little bit rich, rich isn't it to hear a banker Laurie, trying to Laurie, blame other people Laurie, for the crisis that I'm we're so in well well Laurie and, uh, and Emily for that matter the debts of government are government debts now what we're talking about is politicians in seeking popularity spending money that they didn't Part of that debt is bailing may, out the debt banks debt during may, the crisis may, may finish. Exactly spending money they didn't the have government, government and government having government government force accounting themselves okay let's debt. just hear from now, richard now, so, sorry Laurie, let's just hear richard's point we, we've seen that right across europe that the scale of the debt that the governments incurred in order to buy their popularity did two things first of all it created a stock of debt the governments have to repay which they're worried they can't secondly and this is most important what it did it damaged the private sector at a time where we have global competition. Germany has no problem right now. Okay, okay? But Germ Ger Let's Germany has full employment. You okay? said they bought, they bought the popularity. That was what their debt was spent yes. on. The debt was spent, surely, partly on saving the financial sector from complete collapse in the Lehman years. It, th there's no question that that is part of the debt, but that is not the structural deficit, and nor is that associated with the waste of the last government. What you had today is you had an irresponsible politician who was responsible for the debt, Ed Miliband, talking about the need for responsible capitalism. And the fact is politicians Ed throughout Miliband Europe have to face up to their lack of responsibility debt. in the this debts that they incurred nonsense. and they wait the money they wasted. Laurie Penny, last word to you. This is complete nonsense. You're talking in a local context about a financial crisis that is global. I can't believe that a former banker is sitting here telling me that this is, you know, this peddling out this Tory line that this is the Labour government's last. I mean, I'm no fan of the I last Labour government. I don't think it's country. But, I think uh, Greece, but, the, Portugal, but, the, but the idea Ireland, that we overspent France, our way into Last word, last word. Go on, Penny. This just finish nonsense. your sentence. This is, this is no way to talk about a financial crisis. The okay. banks are kidding themselves if they think that we are fooled. OK, thank you both very much indeed. Thanks for coming in as well.